occipital lobe, you see, is responsible for our vision. So obviously there has to be some visual stimuli that we can perceive from our external environment or from our mind for this one to be able to, you know, recognize or identify any stimulus with regard to the vision. If I now show you something like this, you know what it is. If I show you the same scene here, you know what it is. So you are able to receive the info, you are able to receive the image of this. You've seen what object is this. And so the first area to receive the image is area number 17 on the Brodmann's classification or number. So area number 17 is the most posterior area in the occipital cortex responsible for receiving the image if your eyes are intact. Once, you know, something, you know, comes to your way, you know, you will see it. And then this area, number 17, will receive the information, will receive the visual stimulus. That means it will, it will see the image. And then area number 18, that is lying anterior to this area, number 17. Together with area number 19, 18 and 19, areas on the occipital cortex, they are referred to as visual association areas or visual association cortex. Are you clear? So that means area 17 is referred to as primary visual area. That is area number 17. Area 18 and 19, they are anterior to area 17 and they are referred to as, what did I call it? Visual association areas. After the area 17 received the image, of any object that comes to your eyes, area number 18 will now analyze the object. What do you mean by analysis? If I give you this, you see, you have seen that it has a head that is black, it has a trunk that is white, and then you have seen that probably maybe if I turn it this way, you have seen that it has been written white body marker, you get it. And so you are able to analyze it as this is marker. So that means the analysis is the responsibility of area number 18. It is going to analyze the height, the width, the color. Probably if it's something that you hold, if I ask you to close your eyes, for example, now or even by my looking, you, you by my looking at it, you will say this is going to be heavier than this one. For example, now if I sit between this marker and this one, which one is going to be heavier? This one is going to be heavier because we have seen it. This is larger size. So the area of an 18 is analyzing the size, including the shape. If you look at this, this one is what cylindrical. This one is what rectangular. So all this analysis is done by area number 18. And then finally, if I ask you, what, what is this? You will say this is marker because of the analysis of that area number 18. I ask you this one, what is this? You will not know, but then because you know that this is rectangle, you don't know what is inside. Until I open it, if I open it and then you see it, probably by the time I show you, you will be able to recognize what is this. You recognize it, this is what? A duster. And so area number 19 is responsible for recognizing the image that you have seen after all the analysis you have made. So area 17 will receive the image, 18 will analyze, 19 will recognize. Are you clear? That is the way everything is being organized. So now we've seen that. And as I told you before, that the occipital, the occipital lobe has association with the posterior association area that I told you before. 
Now we've seen the occipital cortex. So what is left for us is to discuss the temporal cortex or the temporal lobe. You see, on the temporal lobe, if you can remember, we said we have we have superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and inferior temporal gyrus. So in the superior temporal gyrus, there is or there are important areas. What you call area number 41 and 42 of the broad man, and that is what you call auditory area or auditory cortex, what you call primary auditory area. So obviously there must be uh, an auditory association area. So the primary auditory area is mainly located in the middle part of the superior temporal gyrus. If you can remember, I said the posterior one third of the superior temporal gyrus is occupied by what? The one case area. So the middle part of the superior temporal gyrus plus some aspect of the middle temporal gyrus, that auditory cortex, primary auditory cortex occupies that area. And that is what we call area 41 and 42. So for example now, if I now say, look, I don't like you making noise while I'm having my lectures because you have been making noise. Now you have understood me clearly of what I've said. And I'm sure next time when you come, you will never do this. You are able to understand that. By the time I told you this, the information is received by this area 41 and 42. Are you clear? The, I, I, I told you I don't like that and you are making noise. So all this information I'm telling you passes through this area. So the area 41 and 42 will receive the information clear. And for you to be able to stop making noise is for you to appreciate or understand the language. So you have to analyze and recognize or understand what I was saying as a result of this auditory association area. The auditory association area is just lying below the primary auditory area. And so these areas include area 20 and 21. So they span across the middle temporal gyrus and some part of the imperial temporal gyrus. And so this auditory association area, it is going to analyze and recognize the voice. For example, if I ask you to close your eyes, and then suddenly now I ask somebody to come in, something that you are familiar with, somebody that you are familiar with, maybe among your lecturers. So when he comes, I ask you to all close your eyes, and then I ask the guy to speak. After speaking with you guys, your eyes are still closed, and I ask you, who has talked to you now, or who has spoken to you now? You will say, ah, this one is the voice of Dr. Taylor, or Dr. Asuku, or Dr. Badamasi, or whoever. Why? Because you were able to perceive or receive the voice first by the auditory area, analyze and recognize the voice by the function of the auditory association area. Are you clear? Good. So we have now seen this. Recognition of the voice is mainly the function of <clears throat> the one keys area. Are you clear? So the auditory association area will be able to analyze. Recognition and understanding is by the one keys. Are you clear? So that is mainly the major functions of, so that means auditory cortex, uh, temporal cortex is mainly for audition and comprehension of spoken language. While occipital lobe 
or occipital cortex is mainly responsible for the visual understanding, you know, and recognition of images. You understand. Parietal, mainly for what? For sensation, probably with some part of, you know, language understanding that we have said before, and test sensation. Frontal lobe has a multitude of functions. So you see now, in essence, we have discussed the three or four important areas of the superior lateral surface of the cerebral cortex. What is important now that I'm going to discuss is what we call human homunculus.